facial recognition, already an integral part of American society and law enforcement. I would say most of us by now. Most American adults are in a face recognition database. And it's not just the police. Stores and schools now use the technology as well. So the problems with face recognition is there are no rules. Retailers are using facial tech to identify their customers' age, sex, and moods. And one company in Israel even says it can identify terrorists based on their facial features alone. What type of scientific rigor has been applied to determining whether this is real or not? We've come to Seattle to explore the gray areas of facial recognition technology, visiting an elementary school that's deploying the technology. It seems like it's a very open school. Yeah. And do you feel pretty safe here? Yeah. They've always had a gate there, but then they recently added a door to get in where you have to use your face to get in. And how does that change things? I mean, you just see less people in the courtyard, like, hanging around. This private elementary school in Seattle, with over 300 students, is one of the first in the U.S. to install a facial recognition system. How about you are a visitor to the school okay. and you want to gain access? All right, let's give it a try. Okay. The school installed the system to make access for parents easier and relieve the front desk workers. They also wanted to add an additional layer of safety procedures, since the school doesn't have a dedicated security staff. Nope. No Can't luck. get in especially after the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, which killed 26 people, 20 of them students aged six and seven. Schools nationwide are looking for ways to prevent unauthorized people from entering their grounds. So you wanna make sure that everyone is here is known, all the adults are known. That's right. Okay, well, let's see what happens when I show up. Gate opens and we We're go in. in. The system automatically lets in teachers, administrators, and parents who have signed up to use it. How do the parents feel about it? Did any of them say, I don't want to do it? Well, we made sure that they know it's an opt-in program, and I've got about 300 adults signed up on this, so they're very supportive of it. The school says Real Network's facial recognition system has made its campus more secure, and they're not alone. According to Real Networks, over a dozen schools nationwide are currently installing the software, which the company provides free of charge to schools in the U.S. and Canada. This is an interface that you might find at a school. This can be associated with other IDs, so you can you know, tie it into attendance systems, record systems, things like that. Is the interest these schools have in this related to the active shooter scenario? I think that's some of the issue, and certainly at the high school level, that's where we see a lot of issue. Um, most of the use cases, though, come from the younger kids, that they're concerned about people coming and going from the school. Real Networks says it vigorously tested the facial recognition system at the elementary school and even installed a motion detection feature. But can you trick the system by, say, having a photo of the headmaster? Let's see. Yeah, it opens. Real Networks told us that on the day we visited the school, they had temporarily disabled the smile to unlock feature to install loudspeakers. The system is now back up and running. Additionally, they said the front desk person provides a layer of security. What if a system fails and lets somebody in who shouldn't have been allowed in? Are there other security measures in place? Claire Garvey is a facial recognition researcher at Georgetown Law School's Center on Privacy and Technology. What are the most common applications for facial recognition technology these days? One of the most common applications is its use in law enforcement to conduct investigations. Face recognition is very common in our day-to-day -day lives as well. Think of the iPhone 10 and its face unlock feature. Retail outlets are increasingly using face recognition. There are databases of suspected shoplifters and also high value customers. And employers use face recognition as a, a security measure. And DHS is using face recognition as part of their biometric exit program. The Department of Homeland Security installed this pilot system so the authorities can track who's leaving the country. 
right this way, sir. Compel Verdi is Homeland Security's assistant director for Orlando, Florida's airport. She introduces me to a new way to board the plane. Should I give this a try? Sure. Oops. You would put your feet on the two yellow prints, please. Okay. Look at the camera. And lucky us, it's not going to board you because you're not in the gallery. The passport and visa photos of the passengers waiting to board this British Airways flight are already pulled into the photo gallery of the facial recognition system. Passengers we met on the other side seemed pleasantly surprised. Do you like it? Yeah, it's good. It's good? It's good. It's nice to be getting this thing out, it's not. You don't need that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Researchers at Georgetown University have criticized the usage of the technology. From a privacy perspective, do you have concerns about what DHS is doing with facial recognition technology? My concern is a few fold. One is that there has been a consistent lack of transparency around how the data is being stored and what it might be used for in the future. One in particular is to what degree the private companies that they're partnering with have access to that data as well. Do they then have access to those photos and can they use those photos for marketing purposes? The Department of Homeland Security said that the airlines don't have access to the photos of the passengers and that the pictures of all travelers are stored for less than two weeks. So what do you see as the future? The future is going 100% at every airport and on entry and exit. When it's doing this facial recognition mm -hmm. stuff, can it tell if I look really guilty? I don't think a picture can tell you if you look guilty. Can you tell me what a guilty person looks like? But what if a picture could, could tell if someone looks guilty? We've come to Israel to meet with a company that says its so-called facial feature analysis technology can do just that. So let's go to the system and let's check it. Let's look about the 9-11 hijackers okay. and see what the system says about these guys. Gilboa says that his system isn't checking the photos against a database of known terrorists to find a match. Instead, he claims that his engineers have trained an algorithm to identify facial features and expressions that terrorists allegedly have in common. We run the classifier, okay, and we find that most of them are really terrorists. So what we do, we can find these people without any prior information. I, I don't know what to make of that. The idea that you can analyze someone's face and predict whether or not they have terroristic potential. Yes. What type of scientific rigor has been applied to determining whether this is real or not? I need to emphasize that there is no scientific uh, evidence for the terrorist classifier. We made blind testing with the clients. And in blind tests, we reach more than 80% accuracy. We've not been able to independently verify that Faceception's algorithm accurately identifies terrorists by their facial expressions. Faceception is a case study of where face characterization gets incredibly dangerous. That, quite simply to me, is at very, very best junk science, at very worst racism by algorithm. We brought our own collection of photos of convicted terrorists for a test. Bad quality. It's need to be like mag shots. Women you can skip, we didn't develop on women. Gilboa ran all the photos he selected from our batch simultaneously. His system identified one terrorist, a 9-11 hijacker, correctly. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, was identified as not a terrorist. Faceception claims that its software identifies potential terrorists based on their facial expressions and not based on their race. But the company admits that even in blind tests, people are sometimes flagged in error. I sincerely hope that there is not a market for what Faceception is selling. Unfortunately, they do say they have a contract with a major Homeland Security agency somewhere in the world. Gilboa claims that two government agencies outside the U.S are currently using his software, but he repeatedly declined to name these alleged clients. We've not been able to independently confirm with any government agency that they're using Faceception. We're entering a new world where uncertain technology might try to read our faces as if reading our minds. <laughs>